Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixing Publishing, coming to you from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And once again, I'm with Adrian Nixon, who is coming to us from Yorkshire, England. Hi, Adrian. Hello, Debbie. We're going to talk about your favorite subject in the whole wide world today. Yes, we are. We are going to talk about space. There's so many exciting things happening with space <laughs> where graphene is concerned, because since graphene can touch virtually um, every type of product and industry you could think of, I can only imagine the things that are going to eventually come in, come to pass where space is concerned. So Adrian's going to talk with us about rockets and solar sails. And we could talk about a huge amount more. We've just picked out these two topics, Debbie, because they're a bit different and uh, they're a good way to get an introduction into graphene in space. And as you know, we could probably spend hours just talking about all the different applications. Making rockets lightweight is important because it takes a lot of energy and a lot of mass to get rockets up into space. Somebody's already working on this. This is Orbex. I think you know about these guys, don't you, Debbie? Yeah, I have heard about them. They're in the UK and there's a spaceport being built in the north of the UK in Scotland and they're a private company and they're going to be doing low cost orbital launch services for um, probably low orbiting satellites and that, that type of thing. And they've designed um, a two stage rocket to carry uh, small uh, payloads up into orbit. You can see it's black. The reason that the most of the rocket there is black is because it's made of carbon fiber composites. So this is carbon fiber mixed with an epoxy resin and it's very strong and resistant to impact uh, and very lightweight. If you add graphene into the epoxy resin, you can maintain the strength and reduce the weight by at least 30%. So that's pretty impressive, isn't it? I mean, 30% lighter and that must in that must impact how much fuel you would you would eventually need to exactly yes it makes these more efficient and also on top of this there's a new technology which isn't quite graphene but they've put 3d printed engines into these so these things are being tested these are 3d printed metal engines um, which i think is being used uh, by the uh, the big boys on your side of the atlantic as well debbie interesting 3d printing from everything from the tiniest to the largest items you can think of 3d printing is really making a huge impact yeah we'll hear much more about this and graphene can play to that too at the minute the graphene is just in the carbon fiber it's not in the 3d printed metal uh, but who knows uh, where things are going with that so that's uh, rockets we'll see this one launch in a couple of years in 2022 and um, we'll probably be watching your launch live with a bit of luck, Debbie. Absolutely. I'll be glued to the, to the, to the video of that one. So next one uh, you mentioned was uh, solar sails. Now, these are an unusual technology. Uh, basically, it's like the sail of a ship, but you use the pressure of light uh, to actually push against the sail in space. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't realize that the sun had the power to push something in space. Yes, yeah. And you probably realise, Debbie, that this has been done already. So last year, Falcon Heavy took uh, something called LightSail 2 up, which is a satellite which opened out these big sails to test whether or not a solar sail could actually work. And um, it successfully worked in orbit. So we do know that the, uh, the concept of using light to power something and move something in space is real and doable. That's pretty impressive. Well, it is, and especially, I mean, Falcon Heavy, that's SpaceX. Yes, exactly. Sorry, yes, I should have mentioned that. I'm not as big a fan of space as you are. <laughs> uh, one interesting thing about this, this doesn't, this particular example doesn't employ graphene. However, the Chinese have been working with this and their Academy of Launch Technology, or CALT, has developed a, a graphene composite film, uh, which is exactly suitable for making some of these uh, light sails. And the reason these things are important is because you can use the pressure of light to actually create the propulsion. So the spacecraft itself doesn't need to carry the fuel with it. It's either powered from light from the sun or a laser shine or lasers shining from the surface of the earth. So uh, again, you can get very, very high speeds uh, over vast distances. We could visit the nearby stars with this technology. Yeah, you know, and, um, and as you're talking about it, it, it makes me think that you know, once once we have some type of a lunar village established, mm -hmm. we could probably shine lasers from the moon to push something like this. Yeah, 
Yeah, very probably. I don't know all the full implications of this yet, except that we got very small, very lightweight spacecraft that could carry little tiny robots and cameras and things and get vast speeds over vast distances. Because the, the, once you get these things moving, then you push them once and you push them again, the, the pushing from the light is cumulative, so it keeps on building. Um, just a few weeks ago, there was uh, some more news that came out where uh, a graphene solar sail has been tested uh, at the ZAM drop tower, which is this thing on the left-hand side, Debbie. This is in Bremen in Germany, part of uh, the European Space Agency. They tested a tiny piece of graphene, uh, CVD graphene film, and they hoist a, ca a container up to the top of that tower, take all the air out of the tower, and then drop a container containing the experiments inside. And as it drops, then it's effectively experiencing uh, weight loss. What was that uh, aircraft you were telling us about um, before we started recording, Debbie? Oh, the one that they train um, astronauts in. It has a nickname of the Vomit Comet. The, the idea here is exactly the same as in the Vomit Comet, that you, when you drop something, then effectively in relation to the container, you're experiencing weightlessness on the way down. Um, you've got about between four and nine seconds of weightlessness uh, on this drop tower. And what ESA did here was uh, the European Space Agency. They arranged a little experiment where you had a very tiny piece of uh, CVD graphene, this graphene film, one atom thick. Underneath it, you had um, a one watt laser shining at the graphene foil. They ran the experiment, dropped the canister down the tower, switched the laser on, and they found it actually pushed the graphene, uh, one atom thick graphene piece away at a speed of uh, one meter per second per second. So we know that um, in practice, you can actually create a solar cell from graphene, uh, one atom thick graphene, and it will be pushed uh, by light. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Well, it, it is. And when you look at that tower, what you said that was 360 feet tall, and you, we were looking at the view from below. Yeah, that's a good point. We were looking up inside, yes. Uh, yeah, to, to think that that Graphene can do that in possibility. The important thing, Debbie, is this is just a fraction of what graphene can do in space. There's loads more to talk about, but we just picked out two examples to start off with. Yeah, just to get you curious. <laughs> well, we love to talk about graphene, and we hope that you have enjoyed this, um, this segment, and please subscribe to our channel and take a look at our website. You can get the Nixine Journal delivered to your inbox every month with a lot more information than this. Adrian provides exceptional analysis that takes really complex science and boils it down to this clarity from complexity. Tune in again. We will be back. And thanks, Adrian, for your time. And thanks to all of you for watching.